This is lecture part 2 of chapter number 1 that is the science of macroeconomics. With the help of functional form in which we have seen that quantity demanded is negatively related with price and we can de derive a demand curve for car which is negatively sloped which shows the inverse relationship between price of car and quantity demanded of car. So the demand curve is negatively sloped. This red curve is for demand curve. Here on y-axis, price of car is measured and on x-axis, uh, quantity of car is measured. We have different prices and corresponding to them, we have different quantity demanded. By joining them, we get the demand curve, this one. The demand curve shows relationship between quantity demanded and price, other things being equal, like price of related goods, income, population, etc. These are factors which we assume that they remain constant when demand and price are correlated. Now comes the market for cars uh, supply. Similarly, in order to bring equilibrium in this market, we draw supply curve as well. So here, supply of a car is a function of its own price and price of input. Price of car is positively related with it, uh, with supply. If price of car increases, then it gives incentives to the producers of car to produce more cars and they supply more cars in the market. And when the price of input, that is price of steel, increases, then cost of production will rise. When cost of production rises, then quantity supplied decreases. Hence, we can say that price of input has negative relation with quantity supplied and on the other side, price of car has positive relationship with supply of car. So it is positively sloped supply curve, this one. The supply curve shows the relationship between quantity supplied and price, other things equal. Now there are two curves that is supply, uh, supply curve and demand curve which explains the model here. Now the market for, uh, for cars equilibrium. Now the market for cars is at equilibrium where these two curves that is supply and demand curves intersect each other. This point determines the equilibrium price and equilibrium uh, quantity demanded and supplied. So this point is equilibrium point from where we can determine equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price. The effects of an increase in income. Now suppose that if there is a change in one of the factors such as income, technology, etc. So this will affect the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity and there will be a shift in uh, curves. Suppose that income increases then what will happen? Now an increase in income increases the quantity of cars consumers demand at each price. As we have discussed that uh, this y that is aggregate income has a positive relation with quantity demanded. So, an increase in income increases the quantity of cars consumers demand 
at each price means that aggregate income has positive relation with quantity demanded. If aggregate income increases, then quantity demand of car also increases. Uh, so this increase in quantity demanded is shown by the shift in demand curve and the demand curve will shift to the right from B1 to D2. So D2 is the new demand curve. And now the intersection of the supply curve and the new demand curve gives the new equilibrium and now equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price both increases here from P1 to P2 for price level and from Q1 to Q2 quantity. When the demand increases with increase in income then producers or suppliers will increase the price of the product. That's why price rises from uh, P1 level to P2 and quantity also increases from Q1 to Q2. This is how other determinants beside from price can affect the change in quantity demanded and quantity supplied. The effects of a steel price increase. As we said that quantity supplied is a function of price of car and the price of, in, uh, price of input which is steel. So steel is one of the inputs which is used to manufacture car and if the price of steel increases then the cost of producing car also increases and when cost of production increases then supply will decrease and shift to left side from S1 to S2. This shift in supply curve is due to the change in price of input that is steel. Now the market is at equilibrium where new supply curve that is S2 intersects the demand curve at this point which increases the market price from P1 to P2 and reduces the quantity from Q1 to Q2. So this is because of the increase in price of steel. An increase in uh, price of steel reduces the quantity of cars producers supply at each price and which increases the market price and reduces the quantity. Endogenous versus exogenous variables. In macroeconomics, when we talk about models, then there comes two types of variables. One is endogenous variable and the other is exogenous variables. The value of endogenous variables are determined in the model. Like in the previous model, we have estimated price of car, quantity demanded and quantity supplied. So these are endogenous variables that are price, quantity demanded and quantity supplied. And the values of exogenous variables are determined outside the model. The model takes their values and behavior as given. So here in the model of supply and demand for cars, price, quantity demanded and quantity supplied are endogenous variables, which you determine. Uh, which you determine from the model and those variables whose values can be estimated by using the model are known as endogenous variables 
and the variables whose values are already given are known as exogenous variables. So in this model, exogenous variable uh, are the exogenous variables are you can say aggregate income and price of steel as well, which is not mentioned over here, but you can write price of steel as well. So that is the difference between endogenous variables and exogenous variables. That those variables whose values can be estimated by using the model are known as endogenous variables and those variables whose values are already given are known as exogenous variables. As these words uh, already explained their meaning as well endo means inside and exo means outside so endogenous variables are determined in the model and exogenous variables are determined outside the model that are values that are given a multitude of models no one model can address all the issues we care about there are some complex issues of the economy so the single model is not sufficient to explain the whole phenomena then we talk about multitude models so no one model can address all the issues we care about for example if we want to know how a fall in aggregate income affects new car prices we can use the supply demand model for a for new cars but if we want to know why aggregate income falls we need a different model but how we come to know about factors which lead towards fall in aggregate income so in order to understand this phenomena we need another model to study so there are sometimes complex issues in economics where we need to look into uh, multitude models from simple to complex ones so we will learn different models for studying different issues for example unemployment inflation long-run growth etc for each new model you should keep track of its assumptions as we have already discussed in our previous slides which of its variables are endogenous and which are exogenous the questions it can help us understand and those it cannot so now comes prices flexible versus sticky market clearing an assumption that prices are flexible and adjust to equate supply and demand in short run many prices are sticky they adjust only sluggishly in response to supply demand imbalances there is slight change in prices in response to change in uh, supply and demand or imbalance in supply and demand for example, labor contracts that fix the nominal wage for a year or longer, magazine prices that publishers change only once every three to four years. The economy's behavior depends partly on whether prices are sticky or flexible. If prices are sticky, then demand won't always equal supply. This helps explain unemployment, excess supply of labor, and the occasional inability of firms to sell what they produce. When we say that prices are sticky, then demand will not be equal to supply. There will be imbalance in economy. Uh, which explains unemployment and the occasional inability of firms to sell what they produce. 
and in long run a price is flexible markets clear economy behaves very differently and in long run prices are flexible and if the economy is in imbalance due to uh, and now due to flexible price it will again come to the balanced position so in long run prices are flexible and markets are clear and economy behaves very differently